<laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning on this rainy day, Pastor. Yeah, it's a rainy day, but you know what? The, the word of God is like the rain and snow that comes down from heaven. It waters us and causes us to grow. Ain't that the truth? Yes, indeed. Well, I know you got a powerful word this morning for the people of God, so we're going to sit back and we're going to receive this powerful word from you. So get ready, Tennessee Valley. Professor Mark Barrows with Christ in Action. Take it away, Pastor. All right, indeed. Delighted to be sharing good news this morning. We share it every morning because good news causes hope to arise in our hearts. It lifts us up. And when it's the word of God, faith comes with it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. That's what it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. But then that faith that is deposited in our hearts from hearing what God is saying uh, causes us to take hold of that hope within us. And faith uh, becomes the substance of things hoped for, the very evidence of things that are not seen. We're told that because God wants you to know that there is more, there is better, and there is greater ahead. That's what faith always seizes. It looks beyond what is and sees now, today, what God's plans, purposes, intent is, and lays hold on it, begins to grab it and, and to seize it. That's why we're told that the just shall live by faith. That's what it says in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. As Apostle Paul talks about how the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. If it, therein, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Well, God wants us to live by faith that we might understand, comprehend, know and receive uh, his plans and thoughts and purposes. And in doing so, give him the ability to work those plans in our hearts. That's why it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know why? Because God always declares the end from the beginning. We see where we are, but God sees the end. Yes, he knows where we are. He's not oblivious to where you are. He knows what's in front of you, what you're dealing with, what you, where, even where you've come from. But I often say he's called the ancient of days because that means there is not a day that will ever come that God has not seen, that he did not precede it, and that he is never caught on off guard. As such, as we walk with him, we can walk with this blessed assurance, this certainty of his presence in us and his work through us day by day, moment by moment. That's the difference maker in life. Friend, I tell you, it's good to know the greatness of God and to celebrate that greatness. But that being said, you must know and believe the greatness of God in you. That's why the apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter one as he was praying for believers at Ephesus, those who had received the word. He says, since I heard of your faith and your love and how you're growing in it, I do not cease to pray for you that you would be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. And he says that you might know three things. What is the hope of his calling? What are what the riches of the glory of his, inher his inheritance in us, the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power that works toward us who believe? I'm going to talk about the third one for a minute. He said, what is the exceeding greatness of the power that works towards us who believe? And he continues in his prayer to kind of give us a sense of it. He says, it is that same power that raised Christ from the dead. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God living and resting in and upon you and me and working through us. He says, I want you to grab it. I want you to see it. I want you to know it. I believe that that's God's desire for every one of us, not just so that we'll have some uh, entertainment or fanfare, but that our faith would not rest in the wisdom of men or of this world, but in the power of God. It is the power of God that raised Christ from the dead. 
he had on a physical body and an earth suit just like yours and mine. And so his resurrection after three days in the grave was an exceeding great act of power. And your salvation is based upon that power. Isn't that something? That tells us that God wants us to know the power of his ability to transform, to change, to bring to life that which seemed to be dead and to make us life givers. Friend, God in you today, yes, redeems you from your past and from sin and gives you forgiveness and makes you righteous, but it is the power of God to transform and change you, change your surroundings, change uh, the circumstances, change your house, your neighborhood, your city, your county, your nation, your world. And friend, that power works in us as we allow God to continue to enlighten us and give us understanding that we might walk that out and not just celebrate it, but exercise and execute his plans and purposes as his power rests in and upon us, working in greatness in you and me and in this world. This has been an outreach of Connected Church. Connect with us, connected-church.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever we can get the word out. And of course, right here on this Gospel Explosion to the Outreach to the Tennessee Valley and beyond. There you'll find the word of God declared, God uplifted, his love for you declared that your faith might rest in him, his love for you and your identity in him, that together we are the difference that makes the difference God intends, we desire, and the world needs. To awaken his purpose of knowing him and his love for us, mobilized his mission of making him known and sharing his love with others. That's good news on this thankful Thursday, faithful. Amen. Well, hey, this has been. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, faithful. Great job. Great job. Amen. Well, praise. <laughs> <me>. <laughs> I tell you, I've just been busy this morning. We, um, yesterday, went off there just for a couple of hours because we were updating our system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got that done. Praise God. I come here this morning, having to reset a few little things. And so, um, but I'm on board, like God want me to be. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, we're you're, you, we're 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 live, right? That's that's live radio for us. It is, it is, and I thank you for that powerful word this morning to get us started. I got my engine going now, Pastor. All right, all right. <laughs> that's it. Hey, as long as we're moving and going, he's working in us to will and to do his good pleasure. All right, great job as usual. We're going to talk to you in the morning. All right, have a great day today. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. All right, hey, keep your engine. Let your engine run. Let the Holy Spirit fuel and empower you today. The same power that raised Christ from the dead, working in, to, and through you, and for you, and through you to others. Hey, have a great day. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.